This was yeah. great. I appreciate it. Good luck with everything. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Let's talk to you soon as well. We'll do episode two sometime later on. You got it. Peace. Go the Thursday. Awesome, everyone. So that's really episode six there. But, you know, I just wanted to highlight a couple of really cool things there that he kind of ended on. And really one of the things he mentioned is what he asked me when I go to vending machines, you know, just in the condo I live in, there's vending machines everywhere I look at. You go into all these convenience stores, you know, any store, they always have this kind of old fashioned vending machine. It's very outdated, very poor quality, very basic food ingredients in the machine. So I always say, you know, when I'm talking to candidates, trying to find these goods, these services that have that long term value and trying to find these industries that have that value, that service, you know, that maybe other people don't think about. I know previous episode, we had Mosquito Squad, something that people don't necessarily think about is kind of a profitable business. But Lydia, I just went outside in Naples, Florida today, and, you know, I was getting bit alive. And, you know, it just pro creates this need, the service that people need. You know, a lot of candidates, they're not looking to sell their new business. So just being able to provide that value, that service that other people need. I know in a previous episode with the dry cleaning franchise, you know, that's just a good service that people need. You know, people usually get their dry cleaning done on a weekly basis. So when you talk about monthly recurring revenue, you know, now we're talking about monthly, weekly recurring revenue. So not even monthly, but weekly recurring revenue there. So it's very powerful when you have this good service that people rely on so that rather than trying to sell your services all the time, or maybe this good service that people use, you know, once every quarter, once every year, you know, one of the things I also ask candidates when they're trying to evaluate that opportunity is, how many other people would use that good or service? Would you use that good or service? Would your siblings, parents, friends, would they use that good or service? And the people that you know that would use that service, how often are they going to be using that service? So I always say there's just so many crazy opportunities out there and in industries that people don't think about. Like I mentioned earlier, people think about the McDonald's, the Subways as these kind of restaurant franchises, but there's so many home services opportunities that people would never think about. And there's a lot of cool opportunities. Like I just mentioned Naples, Florida, where I am currently. So there's a lot of, you think about landscaping companies, you think about pool companies, and there are a lot of kind of mom and pop companies that don't actually have all these resources in place. And they kind of are this low quality and it's not because they're a mom and pop. It's just, there's low quality. They don't have the tools. They don't have the resource. Usually it's one person trying to take care of way too many houses, et cetera. It just creates this opportunity for a small business owner to open up a franchise opportunity with the brand recognition that people already know and love, having the tools, the resources in place, and allowing you to survive these tough economic cycles that you know a lot of people are also worried about. So I think that's very powerful. And another thing that he said with the vending machine opportunity, you know, it's something that he's able to continue his own passion with his consulting business. And then he's able to maintain a vending machine business on the side with his family. So franchising, there are different ways where you can diversify that stream of income where it may not give you that executive style corporate level income that you may be seeking, but it allows you to diversify those investments. So one of the things I always talk about personally is not putting all my money into the stock market, not really knowing if financial advisors have my best interests at heart where that money's going, et cetera. You know, I'd rather put it into a business, a good, a service that I have control over that's providing that service to other people. So I think that was something really powerful that Matt mentioned as well. And being able, he does it with his wife. So franchising, we kind of make the joke about, you don't just find franchising, you fall into franchising because, you know, if you're not like me and you have family in franchising, you always kind of fall into it some, some way or another. But once you do fall in, you never go back to corporate America. So I was kind of curious his response there. So I thought that was very interesting. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, especially with marriage, you know, that's a person you spend a significant portion of your life with. Not that I have any experience there, but, you know, if you can build a business doing something you're passionate about together, you know, it seems like that win-win situation, especially in vending machines you know, this long-term industry that has that long-term track record adapting to the new technology. So I think it's very powerful. And 
just my biggest takeaway is how it is such a great way to diversify your stream of income and really being able to take control of your future. So if you, someone you know, are interested in franchising, you know, I'd love to talk to you, walk you through the process. Like Matt and I were speaking about, no one's selling you in franchising. I The first thing I always say is I don't sell franchises. I just partner with people on your behalf, people that are interested in business and in ownership. I'll qualify you, make sure you're qualified for the, the partners that I work with. Then I'll work with you on your behalf to identify those top opportunities. So, you know, today's podcast is a little bit brief with the 45 minutes. So I just wanted to go a little bit extra and kind of give you my two cents with what I've seen in franchising over the many years that I've been involved, you know, starting with when I was in high school, managing a dry cleaning franchise. And I always say to people, just find these industries that aren't fads, these long-term track records, especially coming from corporate America, you may not have the highest risk tolerance. You want to be able to be have that good service that people rely on that I'll keep emphasizing. So, you know, if you made it to the end, definitely subscribe to the podcast, shoot a like, comment, help out the algorithm, reshare if you think this could be helpful with anyone you know. Um, but JD Strategic, Josh Dubois, episode six, this is a wrap. I appreciate Matt's time today of Naturals to Go. And I look forward to connecting with everyone and I appreciate everyone tuning in today.